You're watching Exit 1055 with your host, Richard Rose. Hey, good morning. I'm Richard Rose. Welcome to Exit 1055 Long Island. This is your TV 1055 show about all things Long Island. In just a few moments, what has some homeowners wondering where their rebate checks are, only to hear that old standard, the checks in the mail. But we begin this morning with the shaky state of Nassau County's finances. This past week, a state-appointed watchdog agency shot down the county's latest budget revenue projections demanding a new plan that has angry residents bitterly facing lost services and higher taxes. Just last month, protests erupted in Mineola when Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano added a $105 surcharge onto traffic and parking tickets. That to plug a widening budget gap, his administration argued the millions it would raise would pay to hire more police officers and even avoid a property tax increase. But residents are calling it robbery to pay for what's always been routine police department expenses. Everybody's pushing us under the rug. Oh, that's really unfair. I'm living on a fixed income. Particularly corrupt government. You are breaking state and federal law. No, Republican county lawmakers and the majority heard the protest that cut the so-called public safety fee in half, but they kept many of the other increased fees that County Executive Mangano needs to close a deficit that many analysts widely estimate at between 60 and 100 million dollars. This past week, a state agency with authority to take charge of Nassau County's finances, if it can't prove it's able to balance its budget, then turned a thumbs down on the likelihood of the county collecting tens of millions of dollars in revenues that the county executive needs to claim that he has a balanced budget. The agency, called the Nassau Interim Finance Authority, or NIFA, sent the budget back to the county executive's drawing board, set a very quick deadline for an alternate plan, all while threatening to intervene. And joining us now is Adam Barsky. He's NIFA's chairman, here to explain this tougher approach from an agency with unusual powers to step in, and that could have wide consequences for many. Welcome to the show, Mr. Barsky. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for having me. You bet. First of all, this is an update. We had you on several months ago when you, you more than broadly hinted that this could be coming down the road if you didn't see what you needed and you didn't. So what does your order mean and what's the deadline now? Okay, so what we basically have said is that the, the budget that the legislature have passed is unacceptable to us, so we rejected it. We have to approve their budget in order for it to go forward. And what happens now is they have an opportunity to make modifications in conjunction with the county executive and do that very quickly. We're asking for a plan by December 6th, and they can take a vote by December 5th. Yes. That would be tomorrow after our show airs. Yeah. Uh, so, why such a quick deadline? Well, because uh, they need to get the budget passed. They need to send out tax bills. They have to have all that settled before they start the new fiscal year. So, so it's really a practicality as well yes. as the fact that this has been going on for months, if not years. In fact, sure. how long has your agency been in existence overlooking Nassau County's finances? Well, we're going on 16 years now, but it's only five years since we've been in what they call the control period, where they actually have to come to us to get their contracts approved, get their budgets approved, their borrowings approved. Well, that's so, the heart of where we're at now. Are you yeah. actually going to step in and take over the county's finances? Well, what we're going to say is that we're going to reject the budget. We're going to ask them to make modifications that are acceptable to us. They have an opportunity to do that. If, in fact, they don't, we won't approve their contracts, we won't approve their borrowings, and we will step in and make the cuts ourselves. What exactly is the budget deficit in Nassau? We hear the county uh, controller saying there's $115 million in risky revenue. You hear all these estimates. The county executive claims uh, that's balanced, if you include all of this stuff, that you're not including. What is the real budget deficit, in your opinion? Well, what we've set for them this year, uh, for the current year we're in, that their deficit can be no more than $80 million. For next year, we're projecting that the deficit and telling them that the deficit should be no more than $60 million, and we want to get that coming down to zero. So gradually going down. Yeah, but, and, but the issue at hand is the fact that the budget that was presented uh, had a $36 million shortfall in it because of the actions the legislature took, and they replaced it with revenues that were not uh, acceptable. So that's the current number that needs to be solved for. $36 million. So let's zone in on that, because that was from cutting the uh, safety fee in half, right. which everyone says is, uh, some people even question whether it's legal to do that to pay for ex routine expenses like that. But then they added on these other fees, and they're still coming up short because of something else that you're not happy about that you think is unrealistic. That's this expectation that the county executive is going to get tens of millions of dollars from businesses who can come in under an amnesty plan to uh, comply with a, a, a fairly new county mandate that they file their uh, tax statements on, a, on an annual basis. Is that realistic in any way? Eventually it could be, but right now we expect it to be challenged in court. 
and we think that it will be, even if the county wins, it'll be appealed, and this is a very lengthy process. So in our estimation, we don't think there's any chance they'll see any money from this new law uh, in next year, 2017. Well, if you don't get what you want and you step in and take over, doesn't that mean we're going to see a lot of uh, services get shut down? You have Democratic lawmakers saying that bus services will be cut, that affordable uh, programs will be cut for people on low incomes, after-school programs, community policing. Is that going to be the uh, inevitable result? It almost seems like we're headed that way. It's very possible. And from our standpoint, we would really prefer not to have to go in and make those cuts. We feel that the people who have been elected to serve the county should be making decisions and prioritizing, uh, coming up with good revenues in their budget and making smart choices on how to save money without cutting services. Well, you we know think what? That can be done. Even in this debate, the county executive, Ed Mangano, says, look, this is so we don't have to raise property taxes. He sent out a mailing recently talking about how he's frozen taxes. Uh, do you see that as, uh, you know, sort of like uh, almost politics where a person claims they've uh, maintained a, a property tax at an artificially low place without raising it up. Meanwhile, they're jacking up fees left and right, some of which you find uh, unacceptable? Well, it's choices that they have to make, and they're elected to make those choices. From our standpoint, we just want to see the revenues equal the expenses and that their budget is balanced, and we think that they have to make those priorities, and they're ultimately accountable to the voters when they come up for election again. Well, if you didn't want to lose all these services that they're talking about or cut people, the only other way that I can think of that's realistic at all is to raise property taxes. It's the time to raise property taxes in Nassau County. Well, I think they have to take a hard look at it in order to make the long-term fixes they need to have. And I think continually pushing this issue down the road is only going to make it more difficult when in time when in fact they have to do it eventually yeah it sounds like you're pretty serious about this after all it has been 16 years people expect this uh, to eventually result in something that leads to uh, getting NIFA off its back after all these years uh, you know you have the county executive Ed Mangano under uh, allegations that he uh, broke federal bribery and corruption laws facing federal charges he stayed on the job instead of stepping down and uh, and says he'll fight the charges vigorously has this in any way made it difficult for you to make a deal with county leaders and your dealings with them to figure out how to move this budget forward? Well, not really, but it has been, it is a distraction. And I think it's a distraction uh, for him as well. But I've had no, numerous dealings with him and conversations with him, and he still seems engaged and focused. And I think he's trying to do the best he can. Well, you say he still seems engaged and focused. Do you think in practicality, though, he should step down and somebody else should be uh, dealing with this rather than him since he's facing such, furious, uh, such serious charges that could result in him going to prison? I think that's a decision for him to make and decide what he wants to do in terms of what's right for the county and right for him and, and the people that he's been elected to serve. So. Well, people in Oyster Bay also dealing that with their town supervisor, John Vendito, staying on the job. So uh, the, both of them are facing these federal charges and people wondering what effect it's having. Meanwhile, what are you prepared to do and, and when will you take that action? Exactly when would it, uh, we see that NIFA has kind of really stepped in? Well, again, we would have the, they'd have the opportunity to make modifications in their budget presented to us. We're running out of time. We have to get this resolved by the 14th. If, in fact, it doesn't... 14th of December. Of December. Then we would have to go in with a list of cuts that we've worked on with the county executive. We've given him a few different options on levels of cuts that he would recommend and ones that we would find acceptable to us. Well, if you made a list, what, what's on that list? Well, it would be cutting some programs that are... Uh, related to after-school programs, youth services, the bus service cuts. So that's but, for real, then? That's what we're headed toward if we don't get a solution? It is possible, but we, we really believe that the county should start, start spending a lot of time figuring out how they can do more with less and how they can find savings within their departments without cutting a program or cutting services and that's something they really need to start working on. And they have uh, routinely uh, borrowed tens of millions of dollars every year. Is there going to be any threat to their ability to borrow? Yes, if they, if they don't have a budget in place acceptable to us, we will not approve any borrowing until there is a budget in place. And I believe it's $60 million they want to borrow, right? Yes. Well, that's another big chunk even beyond what we were just talking about. So uh, dark days for uh, Nassau County finances. NYFA Chairman Adam Barsky, an agency that Nassau County residents are getting all too familiar with as the budget crisis in Nassau widens. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Sure. Thank you, Richard.